What's up everybody out there? Welcome back to yet another addicted fishing tutorial. Today I'm out here on the lake and we're gonna go over some of the basics and the fun, fun style of catching trout in the winter time out here in the gross rain on woolly buggers and flies. So if you guys wanna learn more, stay tuned. It's all coming at you right now. All right, so to get yourself started in fly fishing or any kind of fishing with these flies in general, this kind of use of these flies can work on a spinning rod with a float, but I'm gonna use a fly rod today because it's my favorite way to use these things. So you can use any kind of water bobber or fixed bobber that you just attach right to your line. Our addicted floats work really good for this. And just a leader with these flies on the end of it, you can fish it the same method. If you guys wanna see more of that, there's a couple tutorials we have on actually how to fish water bobbers and flies. So check that out. But today we're just out here fly fishing with these little micro woolly buggers. So the rod that you're going to want is any kind of five to, to six weight rod. Four to six weight is what's going to work best for you and that is the size of that rod. And those are going to differ in length depending on what brands that you get. But I have a 10 foot fly rod here, it's a six weight fly rod. I have just a normal common floating line with my Okuma reel on here at, at a six weight as well. So you want to match the weight of your rod with the weight of your reel and your line itself as well. So what I've done here on my rod, I have my typical floating line. I've run this all the way down to the end of my floating line, which has a little bit of a, a loop on the end of it, just a little loop knot or a little eyelet that you can attach your fluorocarbon line to. Uh, we're doing a little something different here out of the boat and I have a split shot attached to this, which is not necessary. So I'm gonna take that off for now. But what I have is just about an eight to 10 foot piece of fluorocarbon line, depending on how long and how heavy you want that. So I have six about seven, eight, nine feet of line here. And that's a six pound test. I like to use a little bit lighter line for trout, especially later in the season in the winter, like we're talking right now, because these fish have been in here a long time. A lot of people aren't stocking fish in the winter time, but they've been in here a long time, they might be a little line shy. And we're trying to use a very natural presentation. There's bugs that must be swimming around in the lake that look similar to this. They probably don't have gold heads and flashy bodies, but the way that they're moving and the way they're falling in the water column is the same as the diet of the fish. So that's why these will be so effective this time of year. So about an eight foot leader down to my woolly bugger fly. Now the fly is probably the important part of this setup. The setup is easy, you can, any, you can use any kind of fly rod, you can really use any sort of style of line, whatever else, as long as you can get it out there outside of your boat or off the bank. But I have a, a different series of flies here and having a good variety of flies is what's important. I don't say go to your fly shop and buy a hundred different flies, but what I would do is go in, ask your local fly shop what's the best flies, what's the best woolly bugger flies to use for the time of year that you're fishing, AE in the winter here, and they're gonna be able to give you a good selection of what might be working in your area. Or if you're just gonna be ordering stuff online, you don't have a fly shop by you, getting things that look just like what I have here are gonna work really well for you. So what I have is really a lot of the same size, a lot of the same color, we have our smaller tungsten heads, but as you see, we have a few different colors of jig of the heads themselves, of the, of the bead heads. Some are made of tungsten, like these two right here. Some are made just of, of steel or lead, and that is really all you need. And what you can see, I have three different styles of colors for heads, and I have three or four different styles of normal colors for the body. Here we got a purple, we got an all black leech pattern. This is made out of rabbit fur and schloppen. This is just made out of different bristles and some of the different flashaboo stuff that you can buy at your local fly shop with a little bit of hackle, a nice head, and just a nice little small hook here. I like to pinch the barbs a lot when I'm fishing these lakes any time of year at this time of year because these fish have lasted this long and if you're not keeping them, you want to safely release them and let them go. So you can see we have different sizes, we have different shapes, we have different color, and that's what's most important is having a good variety and fishing that certain variety in sequence, you know, starting with one fly, moving to the next fly, moving to the next fly, like we're gonna do here for you in a second, and continually changing up when you find where those fish are actually living. So in my opinion, the hardest part of actually fishing these Wooler buggers, especially if you're using a, a fly rod, we showed you that fixed float setup, which is very easy if you're stuck on the bank. But if you're out on the boat or you have a, a, or a, a lake or a river that has a lot of open shore where you're not gonna get stuck in the trees, the fly fishing is almost the most effective way of doing this because you get such a natural presentation with that fly line. So, but the hardest part of it, like I was mentioning, is how to cast this heavy setup. This is a heavy fly. We're not casting a dry fly that lays out nicely, that doesn't tangle with your line as much, and it doesn't smack in the back of the head. So I'm going to give you a couple quick tips of easy ways to improve your fly cast so that you can fish these woolly buggers better out in the middle of the lake if you have something to float on. 
So first thing I want to start with is just your motion of your fly cast in general. The way my friend sent it to me who taught me how to fly fish and I practice and practice and practice. The best way to get good is just by practicing in a nice big open yard or a lawn or going to a football field or somewhere by your house and giving getting your form correct before you put a, a fly on and take it to the river or lake and try to fish it. But the way it was explained to me, you know, we always want to start if we're just learning how to cast, start with about just about as much line as your rod. So I have a 10 foot rod. I got about 12 foot of fly line out and my leader itself. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to draw a straight line back and forth from about my nose to about as the full extension of my elbow. And that's the way you're going to cast this. It has nothing to do with your wrist. So as you do that, almost pretend you got a two by four place back across your arm here, keeping your wrist flat, your thumb pressed against your fly rod, just like this. And you're going to answer the phone and then you're going to hang it up. You're gonna go straight out the same line from your ear to the front of your nose. And that's what's gonna give you the right motion. And the key to that is as you do that, you go slow to fast. And as you go forward, you do the same motion, slow to fast. Your forward cast is no different than your back cast. They should be imaging each other perfectly. So as you do that, you answer the phone, let that rod fully load back behind you to where your line is straight back so that, that you can get the bend in your rod, create the load, and fire that cast forward by pushing again from your ear right to the front of your nose and hanging up that phone, just like so. Back and forth. And this is a great way to practice, and as you do that, take a strip of line out each time. It might get messy, but as you keep going back and forth, you start learning your timing, and you start slow, and you end fast, and you point your rod tip right to the target that you want to be fishing. And that's the most important part of any style of fishing, whether you're using the bobber or the fly. When you end your cast, point your rod where you want it to end up, and that's your target point for that cast. So, as I start stripping line out here, I'm gonna start going into my haul. The nice part about a, a, a set up like this that you want your fly getting wet and you want it on the water is that you can actually use the water for a water cast. So as I'm going to do this, I just saw a fish roll to the right of me here. I'm actually going to throw this back, I'm going to lay my line on the water, and I'm going to shoot that forward, creating enough tension to get that thing started. And that's a good way to just start your cast. You get that water haul, we call it, you pull forward, and you start to get that cast moving forward. Now that we've got it out on the water, if you guys have any more comments on this and how to actually fish these fly fishing techniques, be sure to comment below. But once it hits the water and once our gear is out there, it doesn't have to be far away, especially if you're in a boat, we're going to start using our fingers the way I'm holding this line here and creating some movement with that fly. The reason that these flies work so good a lot of the times is because there's bugs that re resemble or are moving and giving the same presentation and the same profile as these flies are somewhere in this lake. And so what those bugs do is they sit in the water column, they swim, 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 and then fall. And then they swim, 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 and then they fall. And that's what those fish are keyed in on, that motion of that rising and that falling, but again, very slowly. These fish don't have anywhere to go. They're all swimming around in circles out here just trying to find food. So the best way to key in on that natural bite is that swim, 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 and let it fall. And as you let that fall, sometimes you can give it a five, 10 count if you know how deep it is. Today, we're in about 15 feet of water where we're at, so I could let my, my fly fall for a good 30 seconds before it would hit bottom. So I'm gonna find that column where those fish are sitting, start by with a five count, go to a 10 count, go to a 15 count, and then that strip, 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 and then let it fall. Strip, 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 and let it fall, just like that. All right, so now that we've kind of covered a lot of the basics and the casting stuff, we're gonna start moving around the lake and show you actually how good this woolly bugger setup actually works. Okay, so the basic technique that I'm using today and that I use a lot of times, especially in the winter time, you really are only gonna be able to fish on these trout if they're moving around and they're eating. We have a really cool overcast day today. Conditions are kind of perfect for this time of year. The overcast is making it a little bit warmer. It's not cold and clear and we got ice on the water or anything like that. So we're going with this method and we're almost spot and stocking these fish. What I'm doing is I'm going around the lake, whether you're on the bank or in the boat, and I'm watching for rolling fish. I'm letting those fish tell us where they're feeding and where those zones of, of habitat are for them when the water is just temperature. So there'll be little pockets of warm water, whether it's deeper or shallower in those certain areas. So we're gonna row over here, we're gonna get to cast in and see if we can't get these fish on the end of our line. Oh my God, there it was. <sighs> Farmed it. Let's 
So again, I'm just trying to gauge my depth. I'm trying to read how deep each spot it is. And this, I'm watching my fly, and as it goes down, you guys will see it starts to sink about, I don't know, a foot every, oh my God, there it was again. If you're hitting it all in the fall again, everybody, as I'm letting that thing fall as deep as it can in the water column, I'm going to strip and those fish are already there. A good indicator is to watch the end of your fly line until, and if you see that movement, that, that all of a sudden, that randomly, that your line is going and swimming away from you, just wear back and give it a good hook set because odds are that's a fish carrying that fly. Again, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about on how you get such a natural presentation because when they, those fish grab that, they're not feeling that float, they're not feeling a bobber, they're not feeling anything like that. They're grabbing that fly and swimming away with it just as if they were, if they were naturally eating it. So, therefore, they end up staying hooked a lot better. Rolling on the other side. Dude, there is so many fish in here. I'm kind of, got him. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, baby. The old schlapperoony. Oh, knuckle busters, knuckle busters. Cool looking fish. I feel like a lot of the ones we've caught so far too are all males. Oh, one was just chasing. He's chasing him, trying to get the fly out of his mouth. Phil, if you can, just cast over here by my line. That was really cool. I can see another rainbow chasing this one, trying to literally grab the fly out of this fish's mouth. What an incredible fish. Wow. All right. Just an absolutely beautiful rainbow again. Let's get him back in there. Later, buddy. Just strong, strong fish. Again, we want to take as much care of these things as we can. These things have been in here for years sometimes. Some of these stocked rainbow trout can be 20, you know, 10 to 20 years old. I've seen, I've caught ones that have personal testament that the golden trout or something in certain ponds that have been in there for 12 to 15 years. So try to take as much care of these things. Try to not fish them when the water's too warm. This is absolutely perfect conditions right now. And they are just hammering these buggers. There we go. Got him, got him this time. I didn't want to give up yet. <laughs> uh -oh. You don't want to give up. Just, whoa, that water is cold. Come here, you little bugger. There we go. Look at that one. Oh, oh, oh. There he goes. All right, everybody, so the other very, very most effective way, and actually a lot easier way than actually fly fishing with these woolly buggers. Again, I say the woolly buggers get a lot better presentation like you guys saw, and when they take it, they don't feel that resistance to the bobber, but if one, you're not into fly fishing, or two, you're fishing a lake with a lot of brush around the edge of it where you can't get that haul cast if you're stuck on the bank, the fixed float setup and the ultralight rod work really, really good for this. This is a two to six pound Okuma rod. You can use any ultralight rod you want. This one works really good because it's about eight foot long. I have a floating line on here above 30 pound test and a 30 series RTX reel. And then what I'm gonna use here is the must add addicted float. I'm gonna add both of these rings that come with this so that I can have a little bit better presentation and the fish don't actually feel that float as much when they pull it under. So I have my bumper of fluorocarbon line off my 30 pound test with a blood knot. I have about 10 to 15 feet of line, same length of a liter that way you would be using with that fly setup that you saw. So what I'm gonna do here first, I'm gonna add my top tubing here to the top. I'm gonna run my line right through I'm gonna run my line right through the bobber itself, back down, and then I'm gonna add my other piece of rubber to the bottom end of this. And that's as easy as that is. That's almost set up already. I'm gonna add that rubber tubing right over the bottom of this. Getting it a little wet never hurts. Same thing with the top. Bam, and we're completely set up there. Super, super simple, super easy, adjustable. Yet again, you can see how that slides up and down the line. Then I'm gonna take the same woolly bugger that's been working so good for me this whole time, and I'm gonna add it to the end of this here. So you can see the beauty already with the fixed float with how heavy it is, is that it's gonna be very easy to cast it a long ways from the bank here. So I'm gonna start focusing left to right in this little pond that I'm on. I'm gonna cast out as far as I can let that thing hit the water, and then I'm gonna let that fly fall. 
And the same motion that you're doing with the fly setup, how I'm stripping it back in one, two, three at a time, one, two, three, giving that natural motion like you saw before. I'm gonna do the same thing with the bobber. One, two, three, and then you just let it sink. And that bobber is gonna be the indicator that you're getting the bite rather than the line going tight and stretching tight onto that fish. So as it's going, I'm gonna let it fall again. One, two, three. Trying not to make too much motion on the surface so that I spook those fish, letting my fly fall back down, and just repeating that over and over again. And it really gives you that same effectiveness, but the ease of casting that you get with that spinning rod, but you're still fishing that really effective fly fishing technique. All right, everybody. Well, we hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it helped you learn a little bit more on how to catch some trout wherever you are in the world. This is one of my very favorite methods to use using the woolly buggers and using flies to catch stock trout or wild trout. Again, any place that you have to fish near you. If you guys want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to go up here and click this next link to this next trout tutorial. There's all kinds of informative and educational stuff for you guys to get better at fishing. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification, give us a thumbs up if you like this video and comment below and you could be the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thank you so much for tuning in today you guys you stay fishy and we'll see you out there